Larry Hoover devised while he was in prison a structure that would m mirror a corporate structure. He placed himself at the top as chairman of the board of directors. Immediately beneath him was the board of directors. Approximately half of those members were incarcerated and they controlled the prison system. Half of them were unincarcerated. They controlled the gangster disciples' operations. Larry Hoover somehow was communicating with the gang leaders on the street. Because right. one thing everybody was agreed on, everybody we talked to inside the gang, anybody we talked to who had observed the gangster disciples, Larry Hoover was calling the shots. You're bugging a visitor's pass. You know, right. Maybe that's not just a crazy idea. I, I wonder if that could be technically possible. And uh, let's get the group in here and let's brainstorm this. You create these visitor badges and we'll implement them at four separate institutions so that nobody is terribly suspicious. Because if you introduce something new to a prison system, the prisoners will be quite alerted to the fact that there's something up. A wire was implanted in all of the visitors' passes at Hoover's jail, allowing the government to hear all said without the knowledge of even the visitors, and of course not Hoover. Unfair and unconstitutional to say the least. The federal government brought more charges against Larry. They claimed he'd been running a criminal enterprise from behind bars. During his trial, it was revealed that the visitors' badge they clipped on me was actually a recording device. The first thing that became apparent was these tape recordings were very difficult to hear. There was a lot of background noise, a lot of distractions, and of course, Larry Hoover and his visitors weren't screaming out the conversations about this illegal activity. And yet, we could hear it. It was tantalizing. They talked all about how the gang was making its money. Directions from Larry Hoover about who would run the operation. Directions about where the drugs would go. Who they should get the drugs for. As defendant Hoover and six others accused of being his top lieutenants looked on, a Chicago police officer explained why the federal government decided to bug Hoover's visitors at a downstate prison. Mary Hodge told the jury Hoover simply wouldn't discuss gang business on prison telephones. They've been monitoring every one of his conversations in an effort to bring more charges against him. You take the government's uh, position and say this is what Mr. Hoover said when he didn't know that the government was listening. You have to also take these portions where he also didn't know that the government was listening and he talked about the good things that this organization was becoming and the, the things that this organization was doing to be helpful to the community. First century vote is the political proponent of this whole evolutionary change. Okay, it, it's a gang force using a political banner. The concept is to make them niggas vote. Any time you do a, do a step of time, amount of time, it can have two effects. It can harden you, or it can make you think. And uh, I thought, what have you thought, what are the thoughts like on a day-to-day -day basis in incarceration? Well, basically, uh, you think about preparing yourself for the future and preparing yourself for one day when you will return to the streets. If you're prepared, if I'm prepared, I have, uh, I've got employment. Uh, I want to do something for the community. Uh, I see these kids coming in here every day with 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Their life wasted just like I wasted mine. Because uh, ideologies, street gangs, uh, one teenager don't like the other teenagers because the way he wears hat. Because his ideology is different from his. Uh, a disciple don't like a vice lord. We all black people. The nine women and three men on the jury get a glimpse of what's ahead. The federal government alleges Hoover continues to run the gangster disciples from his prison cell. 
He and the six others are on trial, accused of running a multi-million dollar drug ring, dealing heroin, cocaine, and marijuana. Prosecutors also believe the defendants funneled drug money into political organizations like 21st Century Vote. Speaking for two hours, U.S. Attorney Ronald Safer tells jurors he has no doubt the evidence will prove guilt, including secretly taped audio recordings. Safer reveals the jury will hear for itself conversations between Hoover and fellow gang members. The verdict as just read as to count one, you were true and individual verdict. They put a hit on him. The hit wasn't to, to just shoot him Juror or anything three. of that nature. Juror because four. he's still useful. Yes. Juror number five. Yes. Juror number six. Yes. Larry was convicted again and sentenced to six life terms in federal prison on top of the 200 years he was already serving. Because of the Fourth Amendment right, nobody has the right to come and put a bug on another individual with, without his permission to go and hear any conversations for that evidence to be used. Larry Hoover. Brother Hoover, let it be known about the blueprint being published and put something that once was secret into the public domain. Let everybody know that it was about evolution from gangster disciple to growth and development. So everybody didn't want to hear the social change for a positive end. They still stick to that gangster disciple. That's on them. What Larry Hoover is about and those that's locked up is about and the concept that I'm about is growth and development, making the individual have a right to... Larry Hoover spoke out again from his jail cell, this time to explain his role in founding United in Peace. Well, I've been working over the past two years to try to redirect the energies of my immediate organization. I was one of the principal components in forging the United Peace Organization designed to stop kids from killing each other. I know what they're doing. I see the mistakes. I've made the mistakes. I'm in a position to maybe correct them before they make the same mistakes I made. West side in the Austin neighborhood just after midnight on Superior Street. Police say a 15 year old and 16 year old boy were walking in an alley when someone driving a gray sedan fired shots at them. The 16 year old was hit in the ankle and he is OK. But the 15 year old boy was shot several times and later died at Stroger Hospital. In the South Shore neighborhood, another pair of teenage boys were shot and killed. A 16 year old and 17 year old boy were killed near 79th and Luella after they went to the corner store Saturday evening. Police just released these pictures of the suspected shooter. You can see him running down an alley holding a gun. This offender runs up with a gun and shoots and kills two of these guys for no reason at all. Gangs, guns and drugs. On Saturday night, a three-year-old boy was shot and killed while riding in the car with his father in the Austin neighborhood. Police say the 27-year-old was the intended target and also hit. He drove his son straight to the hospital where he later died. The outrage over the toddler's death brought community activists together demanding the shooter come forward. Several community groups raised $10,000 as a reward for information leading to the suspect's arrest. Hello? Well, let me speak to Jay. Who this? This is Larry Hoover. Hold on, Chief. Hello? Hey, Jay. What's happening, man? How you doing? Oh, uh, I'm pretty good. Still fighting this frame. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of different things, but you know, ain't nothing like hearing it straight out the horse's mouth. Well, the truth is, niggas in the street got to get together all over the nation. I'm talking, we got to get together in Chicago, we got to get together in L.A., we got to get together in Houston, we got to get together in New York, we got to get together in Detroit. Real gangsters go to the polls. Mr. Hoover said, uh, real gangsters don't kill each other, they go to the polls, that they looked at that statement as an attempt for GD to be legitimate. The thing is, is that the old Mayor Daly, the father, he belonged to a gang that he helped develop, helped create. He went on to become the mayor of this great city we call Chicago along with the people that grew up with him, his friends, his buddies, his allies. At one time, they had their fingers in everything in the city, things that were illegal. And then they began to get off into business 
They begin to control the commerce within the community and then politics. It is a natural growth process for people who do illegal things within the community to at some point wake up, get a clue about this ain't working for me or my kind or my community. And so therefore, let me get off into business. Let me get off into politics. When he began, when Larry began to talk in those kinds of terms, they put an X on him. We have Larry Hoover's lawyer with us today, and it's uh, a prisoner that we're focused on. He has six life sentences, and they have him next to the Unabomber doing 23 and 1. And what did he do, Larry? What happened? What, what did he do? Why in? Yes, tell me. Tell us this Allegedly, it's for a uh, conspiracy from uh, prison, from state prison. Um, you know, it's alleged. But uh, we do believe, even if he did commit those crimes, the sentence was uh, overly broad and too much. What was the sentence? Six consecutive life sentences in the most secure prison in the world, also known as clean burning of hell, for basically an economic what, crime. What prison is that? Name the prison. ADX uh, Supermax in Florence, Colorado. Um, they house uh, the Unabomber, Al-Qaeda operatives, mass killers, uh, Oklahoma City bomber, things of that nature. How old is he? How old? 68. 68 years old? Yeah, 68 years old. And really the reason why they imprisoned him is because he started doing positive for the community. He started showing that he actually had power, that he wasn't just one of a monolithic voice, that he could wrap people around. So there's theories that there's infinite amounts of universe and there's alternate universe. So it's very important for me to get Hoover out because in an alternate universe, I am him. And I have to go and get him free because he was doing positive inside of Chicago. Just Tyshawn Lee leads an Illinois congressman to a supermax prison. It was Congressman Bobby Rush who went to Admax prison in Florence, Colorado. They are part of the solution, not part of the problem. The Reverend Congressman Bobby Rush was in full pastoral dress as he talked with Larry Hoover and Abdul Malik Kaba, formerly known as Jeff Ford, about Tyshawn Lee, the targeted nine-year-old murder victim. They knew about it and they were appalled at it. Hoover, who co-founded the Gangster Disciples, has been in prison since a 1973 murder conviction. Fort formed the Black Peastone Nation in the 1960s. In Chicago, say the police, 100,000 gang members. In the suburbs, 15,000 more. Ron Cathy, I'm outside the most secure prison in the United States. It's where Congressman Bobby Rush held private meetings today with two of Chicago's original gangsters. Tell those youngsters to stop the killing. Admax houses just under 500 of America's worst criminals, including 9-11 conspirator Zacharias Musawi, the Shoe Bomber, the Unabomber, Oklahoma City, and Olympic Bombers, to name a few. Hoover and Fort spend 23 hours a day in their cells and are allowed minimal human contact. They didn't ask me to move mountains or, or to use any kind of clown to help them. Rush is convinced that if Hoover and Fort are allowed to communicate, they could help the now desperate effort to stem Chicago's violence. Old man made it to the shutdown, huh? Yeah, yeah. They were no Fort had to sit down for lunch. Yeah, yeah, that's why I knew they they, they, they didn't there together, right? Mm hmm Yeah, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. Hopefully that uh he accepted great, but I, I mean, I pray for it and all that, but I just don't see it happening, you know what I mean? But hopefully it do, it will. Because I've seen them do that so many times, they'll let you make it right there and keep you right there for 20, 30 years. But you know, when, you know, once the people get behind you, man, sometimes, you yeah. know, you know, it, that, that's, yeah. that's what, uh, that's what counts, you know? Exactly. And especially that's the right do. people, you know? That's right. You know, people need to rally behind old man, honorable old man. And, you know, people get behind their own people and all this and that. He, he, he won out. Brother Hoover, that is in prison today, you have him out there in Florence, Colorado. I read his life. He once was in criminal enterprise. But GD, he changed it to mean growth and development. And when Larry Hoover changed the aim 
of the so-called gangster disciples to growth and development and began to guide them into absolutely uh, good things, you arrested him in prison and gave him four or five life sentences. Why did you do that? You were afraid because Larry Hoover had the ability to organize young black men in particular. Larry Hoover is an example of a man that was turning his life around and as soon as he tried to turn his life around, they hit him with six life sentences. So I believe he's with, you say don't tear down the statues, Larry Hoover is a living statue. He's a beacon for us that needs to see his family, that needs to go out and represent. When you have- man got 43 in, man. You know what I mean? Uh, and then all, if, if, if people open up their eyes and just look at his case, you'll see that he's been straight railroad. It's straight BS. The man in the joint, they give him that all this other time just before he can't make it to the free world. Because they, they scared him because he got a little political power now. Because about him being conscious, that means that he can, you know, sway the people towards a vote. And that's what they don't want. He ain't about all this stuff that they're trying to put on him, you know. He, he ain't with that self-destruction, you know what I mean? That, that doesn't even fit him, you know. That's, that's, that's dumb stuff. That's what they want people to believe, you know what I mean? And then you got these ignorant youngsters out there that they'll be talking about, yeah, if he came home, what they'll do to him, you know, this and that. That's stupid to even talk like that. It was a, once upon a time, they couldn't have got away with that, you know what I mean? They couldn't get away with that being around nobody like myself, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't accept it, you know what I mean? He ain't saying he talk like that around around me about the old man, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I sacrificed everything I got. I sacrificed, I'd be going back to Colorado and, and be happy about it. Cause I'm, I'm not going to be talking like that about the old man around me. If you read the judge's opinion, you'll see that the judge said, I'm going to do this, disagree with a colleague and everything. So I'm not going to wear with this guy just because of, you know, what he's uh, accused of. And sure, I'm sure he got a bad background in this net, but I'm not going to wear him. He still is worthy of the love. Man, I'd like to see him get out of, at least get out of there, you know, but I'd like to see him make it to the world. Man. Well, the big issue, uh, the issue that when I reviewed everything that everybody, that had, any lawyer that had anything to do with this case thought was the biggest issue in the case was the suppression of the tapes themselves. There's federal statutes that guide the process of wiretaps, how these tapes are sealed, and there was, they didn't follow, the government didn't follow the procedure that's dictated by the statute. Well, I think the Vienna tapes should not have been allowed, basically, because we believe that the government obtained these tapes illegally, uh, in violation of the wiretap laws, in violation of the U.S. Supreme Court laws dealing with wiretaps. We live in a society that believes in redemption. Every Sunday, people go to the church of their choice, every Saturday to the synagogue, every Friday to the mosque. And the preachers and the rabbis and the imams talk about the redemption of the human spirit. People can and do change. Mistakes can be learned from. I'm very honored to be a lawyer for a man named Larry Hoover. I'm not justifying things that the government said Mr. Hoover did, but I am here to tell you that Larry is not the same person that he was when he was on the street 40 years ago. What college from? Larry Hoover. An inmate at a federal prison. This call is being recorded and is subject to monitoring. Hang up to decline the call or to accept dial 5 now. If you wish to block any future... Hey, hey. Hey, what's happening? How you doing? Oh, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. It's, it's a beautiful time to, to feel that way.
Right. Yeah, I uh, I believe it's a matter of time right now. Uh, I explained to uh, your wife that, uh, you know, some things are destined and it'd be a matter of time before they come to fruition. And, and that's my belief. But in the, in the mean, in the meanwhile, you know, we got to strategize all the way to, you know, the end. Because I, I, I could see them trying to muddy the water because he, he, even they see, you know, what's about to take place. Yeah, yeah, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm uh, you know, I'm I'm used to them doing that, and 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 I don't mind standing where right is concerned. So I, I, I'm gonna figure out how to make all that work against them. <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, because you know, all I ever been was a law-abiding citizen. So you know what I mean, and 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 uh, I wouldn't. Uh, be down with something that's not right or illegal. So this is uh, this is just the right thing to do. Open our ears and our hearts to Larry Hoover's plan to make the city of Chicago and other cities safe communities worthy of our support. Anything that we're doing is going to take work. Basically, I think I've, I've done my time. I, I paid my debt, but... If there's anything that you could say to your son right now, what would you say to him? Well, you know, I would say to him, Larry, just pray. There's a God in heaven.